aspects of the system, uh, especially of the Japanese models. Uh, well, quite frankly, there is no region protect at all. So any, so theoretically, any game system, any 3DO system can play any game from any region, which is really cool. Uh, but that also made it very easy for pirates to uh, basically just burn ISOs and play a game that way, which probably didn't help things much as the internet was just starting to gain prominence around this era, even though it would have taken forever to download an ISO at that time. Another interesting thing uh, is simply that uh, some games from Japan are, despite this, are not compatible with uh, uh, North American models as uh, the North American models did not contain the kanji fonts necessary to render these games. And, uh, well, I'm glad I was able to pick up a model here. Uh, there was a time in New when I was living in New York City, uh, around uh, Spanish Harlem, that I had found a 3DO. I didn't end up buying it because the assholes asked for 50 bucks, which it clearly was not worth. But I'm kind of glad I didn't, of course, uh, especially since I was able to find this one for much, much cheaper. Uh, I'd say more around along the range of like $15. That's more my my pricing. That's more something I can I can accept. And then along with that pricing, you get a bunch of uh, extra games for very, very little extra. And uh, well, you end up with a good time. <laughs> it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fun afternoon. Well, let's check it out. Time to hook this some bitch up. Okay, as you can see, I got my composite cable. As soon as I get back to the States, I'll be using an S-Video cable, of course, because that's just how I roll, motherfuckers. And here we go. Alright, time to hook this up and, uh... Oh. Huh. Well, looks like I'm gonna have to deal with this then. Alright, here we go. Let's give this a shot. There we go. Perfect. That is the Morgan way. Alright. There we go. Alright. Power cord over here. Got this uh, AV cable over here. Alright, time to set this thing up for reels now. Alright, let's see if this works. Alright, so far good to go. Let's see if the software runs. Alright, come on, work. Damn you, work. Don't let this be a wasted investment. Oh, thank God. First, let's check out Paddock Note 95. Why the hell would I get a horse racing game? Because it's cheap as sin. Well, if the length of the intro or the shakiness of the camera hadn't already turned you away from this video, this is indeed Paddock Note 95 for the 3DO, brought to us by Fuji Television Network, a huge television company in Japan. And let's look at the intro. All right, let's take a look at Paddock Note 95. First, let's go to this uh, information location, if you will. As you can see, we travel in uh, various uh, still-framed pictures. And basically what this area is, it's general information about uh, your jockeys, your horses, and uh, any sort of race information that you may have had like the stats the counts and all that stuff okay. 
And as I've never really played this game before, I have nothing. Next up, we're going to the Narita Bryan Museum. Apparently, Narita Bryan was a quite famous uh, horse back in 95. And they have a, a whole uh, room here with all sorts of videos and whatnot dedicated to this one particular horse. Or as they say it there, Narita Bryan. Whatever. Let's take a look at such a clip. イギリスからイギリスから I don't know about you, but to me this seems awfully dramatic for a video about a race horse. そして don't you dare fail. Here in the smallest building, uh, we are shown lots of information about uh, uh, with uh, the horses and whatnot. Uh, apparently, uh, lineage guides, um, probably information about you know past horses, perhaps even Narita Bryan's lineage. But I am sorry, I. This is too technical for me, and I, I, I don't. I have a very, 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 very small idea what this can possibly mean. And finally, the main event, the simulation room, where you actually get to have your race simulated. With this top option, there's all sorts of data you can look at, uh, but since I have no data, I've never raced or anything like that, there's nothing here, folks. Nothing here. At least for me. Up next is the whole meat and potatoes of the horse racing simulation. The simulation. Unfortunately, I couldn't figure this one out and get it to work. I'll keep working on it. Next up, we've got Winning Post. Yes, a, another horse racing game. Let's just get through this, okay? No. Alright, let's take a look at another intro. definitely find this intro very interesting as uh, horse lineage and having horses beget horses is very, very integral to this game here.
Yes Indeed Winning Post, produced in 1994 by Koei Company. And this is definitely a different game. It definitely feels very, very different, plays very different. Here it's telling me I don't have enough space in my 3DO, even though my memory is completely empty. Here, this nice woman, whoever the hell she is, is asking me to input my age, blood type, uh, the first horse I had, uh, and other sorts of information. Here, I've already entered in my name, and I'm selecting my honorific as Sensei, so Krisa Sensei. Has a nice ring to me. And here, you get to select out of a pair of horses here. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear that you can s individually select each horse for your pair. Uh, but it does give you a pair to select from, and I select uh, Running Free and Long Long Lady. Or Wrong Wrong Lady, however way you'd like to interpret the Japanese transliteration. And apparently they've had a four-year-old baby, so I'm picking the name Atomiko. Why? I don't know, it sounded like a pro wrestling name. And apparently I'm receiving a present of a three-year-old uh, horse. And I guess uh, I get to choose the parents from which this three-year-old horse comes from. Of course, needless to say, you have all sorts of options here. Uh, you can go through all sorts of things. You can ask uh, uh, the doctor what your, how your horse is doing, and you can check all sorts of other stats. But what I wanted to do from the last game that I didn't get to do is actually have a race. Will I be successful this time? It looks like I may be. And apparently I've been put in the main race. Sweet. Now, my problem is I don't know which horse is mine, but let's give this a shot nonetheless. Sadly, my own Atomico did not come out with a duke, it was Meiji Soprano. Shucks. Now a little time for something different. Let's check out Lost Dungeon. A pretty direct adaptation of Dungeons and Dragons. Alright, again, let's take a look at this intro here. SSI. Very familiar territory here. For nerds!
I do have to say that while this intro is a pretty good um, atmospheric intro to the game, and the music is certainly good, seeing a small character walking to a castle is not necessarily the most exciting of things. Here we go, Lost Dungeon. And now that that appears to be done, uh, this game has, of all things, a character creator, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's limited to mostly stats, though. So if you're expecting like a, a visual, physical character creator, you're not going to get it. But this does roll your stats for you depending on the limits of uh, that particular race. As for which version of D&D this is... Uh, adhering to because I know the rules change I do not know so let's get into the uh, meat and potatoes of this the uh, dungeon crawling experience of this it's a first person uh, kind of view And yeah, things walk at you and attack you. And depending on your stats, you either beat them or they beat you. I think most people might find this to be pretty meh, but it, this looks interesting to me. This is going to be worth uh, a checkout for me in the future. Well, as you could tell, I've never played this before today. All right, next up, Total Eclipse. A space shooter. And, honestly, not a bad one either. And here we go, Total Eclipse. Uh, I didn't show you the intro to this one because not only is it long, but it would be incomprehensible for most of you. So, it was incomprehensible for me, too. Uh, technical Japanese is like moon language to me. We'll show you this. Terrifying, mannequin-like 3D models that just stare unblinkingly at you. Very few things creep me out more. So I guess here's the gist of it. Things happening, plant in trouble, gotta blow some shit up. And uh, I guess you could consider this a, a shooter, and not exactly a rail shooter, I don't think. Uh, but you don't have all the freedom in the world to go wherever you want. You can't turn around or whatnot. Or at least I haven't been able to yet. But yeah, if you don't mind that, it's pretty fun. You gotta destroy all those little towers there and the enemies and whatnot to, to, to pass the stage. There are some clipping issues, as you can see. All in all, this is pretty fun. It's, it's not bad, and once you get the hang of it... Oh. And finally... One of the better games on the console... Super Street Fighter 2 Grand Master Challenge. And if you don't know Street Fighter, then I'm afraid I'm gonna have to slap you one.
what can you say about this one? It is, in fact, Street Fighter. In fact, it's the game that everybody seems to always bring up when they talk about the console. Thank you very much for this very special unbagging of this year's used 3DO console. Everything works out fine. It survived uh, international uh, travel, and so far, so good. It's just a shame that the console's power was just simply used for rendering FMV games. But, like I said in the first video, the beginning of this, I didn't mind that. I, I like FMV games, and quite frankly, I don't have enough of them. Well, anyways, this is Chris Fletch Douglas for Brixel Dirt. See you next time. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching, and if you have the chance, check out some of our other videos on the People's Business Network, and if you like it, subscribe. It'll help pay for a much-needed drive-by.